whenever you have to conclude something, whenever you have to make a judgment, then you would apply the inferential statistics. Okay? You want to conclude what is the relationship between stress and anxiety. Okay? Here you would require inferential statistics. You want to conclude something or what is the difference in the creativity of boys and girls. You want to arrive at something. You want to conclude something. Here you would require the inferential statistics. Another application of inferential statistics is when you want to infer about the population on the basis of your sample. Okay? Now, can you recollect what we did earlier? We could not study the total population. So, we decided to sample and we studied the sample. Now, whatever you have found in your sample, does it hold true for the population or not? To generalize your present results to the population, you would need the inferential statistics. If you, I just like to give an example, if you ever tried cooking and you are cooking a dish and you want to see whether it is cooked or not, whether it is done or not, right? So you would not taste everything in the dish, you would not eat the entire dish and say no, it is not done yet or it still needs cooking, you will take a spoon and you will eat it and on the basis of that spoon you will say that the dish is either done or not. So the entire dish is your population, whatever you take out is your sample. Now whatever you have found in your sample, does it apply to the entire population? Whatever you have eaten with a spoon, can you talk about the population on the basis of that spoon or not? Okay. Here you would need the inferential statistics when you want to apply, when you want to generalize your results to the population. So here comes the role of inferential statistics. Are you clear? Yes. Okay. Now, another very important issue in psychology is the concept of variables. What is a variable? A variable is anything which varies and can take a number of values. Whenever we are doing research in psychology, we are primarily concerned with the variables. Stress can be one variable because your stress scores might be different from mine or from his and your stress scores today can be different from your stress scores yesterday. Okay? Age can be a variable. Her age is for example 22 years, mine for example is 32 years. So I can have a different value on the age. Then height is a variable, anxiety is a variable So because it can have a number of values. right? So variable is something which can take on a number of values and basically we have got two types of variables in psychology talking about statistics, you will encounter two types of variables. One are the quantitative variables and second are the qualitative variables. Okay? Quantitative measurement variables, they are also called the measurement variables and second are the qualitative or the categorical variables. The variables to which you can assign numerals, to which you can assign values, to which you can assign scores, they are the quantitative variables. For example, weight, height, stress, anxiety, motivation, you can all quantify them. You can give a value to them, you can give a number to them, you can give a score to them. So they are the quantitative variables. On the other hand, there are certain variables to whom you cannot assign any number, but they have to be studied because you belong to a social sciences field. You need to study. The examples can be race. One can be an American or Hispanic or an Indian or a Chinese. So race is one categorical or qualitative variable. Then gender. You can be a male, you can be a female. So gender is another qualitative variable. Okay, are you clear with the concept of variables? 
Now out of these quantitative variables, there is another classification. The quantitative variables can either be continuous variables or discrete continuous variables or the discrete variables. Now continuous variables are those variables which can be measured to an arbitrary degree of fineness usually depending upon your measuring instrument. Okay? For example, is the age. Your age can be 2 years, it, it can be 2.1 years, it can be 2.12 years and it can be 2.123 years. Reaction time is another continuous variable. If I say the reaction time of a person is two, uh, 2 seconds, another person's is for example 3 seconds. Between these two values of 2 and 3, a person can have any reaction time which is a valid answer or valid measurement. Somebody's reaction time can be 2.1 seconds also, it can be 2.12 seconds also, it can be 2.14 seconds also because you should just have a good apparatus with you, you should have a good measuring instrument with you and you can measure it to any degree of fineness. So this is basically the continuous variables. Actually, there is a continuity between the two scores. Okay? One score is 2, another score is 3. We can have any value between 2 and 3, there is a continuity. Okay? But on the other side, the discrete variables are those variables where there is no continuity. If you try to give any continuity to that, it will be an invalid score, something which is not valid. For example, if I ask you, how many people are there in your family? You will say 4 people or 5 people. You cannot say 4.2 people or 4.34 people. Okay? If you try saying that, it would be an invalid score. So these, this is the example of a discrete variable. So are you clear about all the variables now? Okay, students, so in this discussion today, I informed you about the basics of statistics. I'm sure our next discussions would be based upon this one today and today we have learned what are statistics, what are the types of statistics and most importantly the variables. I'm sure you would, uh, you enjoyed the discussion and uh, I look forward to uh, sharing more and more information and knowledge with you. Thank you so much.